Now we come to the portion of this morning's service where we uh, get into, before we get into the study, to do an end times update and prophecy update and uh, kind of news items. And this is update number 40. And uh, I was reminded out of uh, Romans chapter 1 where we see this kind of uh, a description of what's really taken place not only in Paul's time but also exactly what's happening today. And uh, Romans chapter 1 where it's talking about how God gave them up to their uncleanness in chapter 1, verse 24, and the lust in their hearts and uh, to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Even <clears throat> the women exchanged the natural use for what was against nature. And likewise, men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving themselves the penalty of their error which is due. And even though they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. There are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, of venters of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only those who do, but those who approve of those who practice it. And we're seeing that living out more this day than any other time in history. Again, it's always been an issue throughout time because you're dealing with sinful people. This week in the Supreme Court in the United States, they're starting to hear these arguments to try to change the Constitution to accept same-sex marriages. Uh, praise the Lord, there is a conservative judge, and there's, there's a couple conservative of the nine of the Supreme Court, um, but he repeatedly noted about the, the high court case that if they find the same-sex marriage as a constitutional right, then the priests, ministers, rabbis, and imams will be required to perform ceremonies regardless of their religious belief or fate the state penalties. So if you don't go along with the Constitution, then you're going to have some serious penalties that's going to occur uh, within the church, within the, the ministers, and also within the Christian schools or other universities out there. So it not, it not only affects the church, but it affects the, the education system as well. Justice Scalia repeatedly suggested that once a constitutional right uh, to marry by same-sex couples uh, was enshrined by the court, a member of the clergy cannot be given civil marriage powers by the state unless they agree to perform any and all marriages uh, that the nation legally recognizes. So even though biblically we won't recognize it, but you have to do it if it's part of the Constitution, is what they're saying. So every state that allows ministers to marry people, their marriages are in effect under state law. If that will not be the case, then indeed we'll hold a constitutional matter that the state must marry two men. Now, what has taken place in the United States is also going to take place in other parts of the world as well. And it stands that uh, most clergy do serve a dual role, celebrating uh, church nuptials and also signing legal documents allowing the state to recognize that marriage. But if they refuse to conduct same-sex marriage you know, uh, rituals and ceremonies, government official, officials may strap, uh, strip the um, clergy of their state legal standing, uh, rendering their marriage uh, legally invalid in the eyes of the state government. And he also said that he was reserved uh, to give the power to compel someone to violate their conscience. So he said, I'm concerned about the wisdom of this court imposing through the Constitution a requirement of action which is revolting to many of our citizens uh, for religious reasons. He also noted that most religious denominations are not likely to change their views concerning the marriage of same-sex couples. He also noticed the difference between state laws, which uh, can make exceptions for religious beliefs, and finding a way the right uh, to gay marriage in the Constitution, which would allow no exceptions. And so, where states try to redefine the definition of marriage, 
uh, has to honor it, so that, and, and so forth. And so once it's been made a matter of constitutional law, it's inconceivable that a minister who is authorized by the state to conduct a marriage can decline to marry two men, or women for that matter. It's inconceivable, you know, that that would be allowed. And so he continued to explain that same-sex marriage bans in state laws or laws, and they're not constitutional requirements. If you let the state redefine marriage, you can make a religious exception. The state can say, yes, two men can marry, but ministers do not believe in the same-sex marriage will still be authorized to conduct marriage on behalf of the state. You can't do that once it's constitutional uh, prescription. And Scalia, who's a kind of a, 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 he's a Roman Catholic believer, uh, same thing with uh, Justice Robert, uh, but he says that no religious exception can be allowed for a constitutional right. A minister is not given the state power unless he agrees to use that power in accordance with the Constitution. You can't appoint people and then go ahead and violate that Constitution. So what they're trying to do is to, to become a constitutional right for same-sex marriages. And if you don't like it, you're going to be penalized. And so they're trying to push down the same sex, hope, and, and I think they're going to end up going to a, um, a state religion, what they're heading toward. You know? and, and there's punishment if you don't abide by the Constitution. Now what you also don't get, over the years, you know, before moving here to Australia, quite a few times on the ballot was this proposition to redefine gay marriage, you know, and marriage between a man and a woman. Every single time that it was on the ballot, it was voted, no, we don't want to change the definition of marriage between a man and a woman. Hands down, the majority of the people said no. That gets thrown into the court system, and then the court revokes the will of the people. So there's no point in voting when the, 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 the courts are going to override the vote and the will of the people because they're liberal judges that are appointed by people that are liberal. And it's going to continue to escalate, not only in the United States, but also here in Australia. We have very liberal laws that uh, this will continue to escalate. On another issue, kind of tying into the same idea and general conception of that is the transgender debate. It's getting more known, uh, this particular interview that happened in this previous week with Bruce Jenner. Um, He's given a voice to this. It's gaining more momentum. He was a man who was a decathlete in the Olympics. He was a man of the, you know, male athlete of the year in 1970. But he dropped this proverbial bomb when he admitted to a huge TV audience that he is on a transgender journey. In this particular interview on ABC with Diane Sawyer, he said he's been experimenting with cross-dressing since he was a child and later when he was married to his different wives. And uh, sometimes he referred to himself as a he, sometimes as a she in this particular interview. But he realizes he's got a, the soul of a female. And he says, my brain is much more female than it is male. It's hard for people to understand that, but that's my soul and what it is. The tabloid publications have been speculating his struggle for a number of years since starting on the reality show of, uh, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians. And so he says that he's, uh, he still has all male parts, uh, but he wears a long hair and a ponytail. He has breast implants, other plastic surgery. He has a French manicure, and he's undergoing hormonal injections. And the public reaction to this particular interview with him, making this announcement, uh, was very uh, supportive, largely, especially among a lot of celebrities. And when you get these people saying things, people just buy into what they're saying. Oprah Winfrey tweeted, all of us deserve to be loved for who we are. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres, who was a lesbian herself, uh, admitted that he's saving lives and opening minds. Lady Gaga tweeted bravery. Just hours after this particular interview, Australian radio started the, um, a, a, a little momentum called hashtag paint your nails for Bruce hashtag. Hashtag stupid. <laughs> but urging men and women, you know, to, you know, color, 
you know, paint their nails to show their support for Bruce Jenner. The message was clear. Don't judge Bruce Jenner. Accept his choices. Be tolerant. And that's the message that they're trying to get. And again, we're not here to bash any in, 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 individual or any other person that wrestles with the, the gender identity problem. Every human being deserves to be loved and respected regardless of their gender and what they think they are, what their struggles are. As Christians, we need to offer support uh, in, in helping people. And um, we can't accept someone's behavior if it's destructive or unhealthy for them. You see, to affirm a person's choice uh, just to make them feel accepted is not love. Now, in, in handling this, and uh, I was coming back from a soccer match yesterday with my son. Um, we're in Croydon, coming back. We stopped by Maccas for, for breakfast, and here's a guy dressed as a woman coming in. Son looks at him, he looks at me, and we just, it, it's hard not to stare because it's not normal. A guy wearing girls' clothes, he has a purse, girls' gloves on. You know, it's just not normal. So you have to stare. It's just normal. <laughs> but it's just, you see the struggle, the confusion in that man's eyes. Here's some things that we can point out to help understand it or minister to people in this condition. Number one, understand that gender is a part of God's sacred creation. Gender is God's idea. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 27, God created them in his own image, male and female, he created them. And so our, I, our, our gender is part of our created identity. It's part of God's plan for our life. It's not fluid, it's not changeable, it's fixed. Just like a dog cannot change into a cat or a, a bird can change into a fish. Man cannot change into a woman or vice versa because gender is a fundamental aspect of creation. Secondly, and here's the, the biggest point with what goes on with all of this discussion with the lesbian, gay, homosexual, transgender, bisexual, and they've added a bunch of other letters to the alphabet to this whole identity crisis. But Satan is the author of confusion. He's the one that's behind it all. Because of the entrance of sin into the world, human beings struggle with all kinds of emotional, mental, physical, and sexual brokenness. The world is full of abuse with uh, fear and violence and ignorance and sickness and poverty and addiction, all fueled by the devil. He is the author of the confusion here. And so Jesus called him the liar and the father of lies. Sin began when the devil went to Eve and questioned God's truth. That's what these, this confusion is. They're questioning God's truth. Satan even questioned um, Jesus' identity as the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, right? The temptation in the wilderness. And as long as we're under the influence of sin, our minds are darkened. Paul went on to say that uh, he has blinded the eyes of the unbelieving. And so a person who is a part of Christ can be, you know, who's apart from, not with Christ, but apart from Christ, they can be tormented by all kinds of evil, degrading thoughts. The devil does this because he hates people, because we are made in the image of God, and he wants to attack that, that identity. And the other thing that, that comes up, because it, it happens, there's quite a few people that try to go through a uh, surgery to you know, replace this confusion. And uh, there's a man, Walter Heyer, uh, who had a, an operation back in the 80s. Uh, he lived as a woman for quite a few years. And later he realized that he made a mistake. And he says this in his website called the sexchangeregret.com. Uh, and he writes, eventually I gathered the courage to admit that the surgery had fixed nothing. It only masked and exasperated a deeper psychological problem. He also pointed out the studies of over 500 transsexuals you know, proved that surgeries and hormonal therapy does not cure people of their confusion. It doesn't. Only Christ can heal that. Only Christ can set people free. Only Christ offers healing from the gender confusion. 
And when the Apostle Paul, going to Corinthians in chapter 6, verses uh, 9 through 10, where he mentions about fornicators, those are people who are having sex outside of marriage, adulterers, idolaters, homosexuals, and effeminate men, that is men who dress as women in engaging prostitution, and yet Paul said, that, you know, these people were set free from these sinful lifestyles after they believed in Christ and they come to Christ. Doesn't mean they're not going to struggle, but it means they've been set free from this addiction lifestyle. Paul didn't promote tolerance or acceptance of transgender issue or confusion. Instead, he offers hope and healing. That's a much better expression of love, isn't it? While today's culture pretends to care about people like Bruce Jenner and, and all these other people that are struggling with that, trying to put a, a you know, a band-aid on this problem, only Jesus can go to the root of the problem and totally heal it. And that's, as Christians, we can offer that hope and point people in the direction. So as confused as he is, here's the issue, reason why I bring this up, because he sets the platform for people to be looking to him. Millions of people are looking to the situation and trying to, you know, say if it's okay. It's okay to be, you know, dress as a girl to, you know, it's okay you know, in this lifestyle. And basically what they're trying to do is get acceptance and say that God made a mistake in how he created you. And that's a lie from Satan. Don't believe it. Receive God's truth of his word. Receive his love and grace and forgiveness. Jesus wants to set people free. He wants to set people free that are in bondage to sexual sins one of the, the, the things that so many people struggle with. And so this is a, an issue that's going to continue to get worse in these end times. And so we need to be praying. We need to be aware and, and love and, and share the truth with people. Amen?